folks. My name is Pan, and I'm from the Computational Biology Group, Microsoft Research Asia. Our group has been actively working on cross-disciplinary projects of computer science and fundamental biomedicine research. Recently, we are exploring the application of deep learning algorithms on gene regulation modeling. And in this talk, I will share with you our recent thoughts and plans on this direction. Genes are made of DNA. In our bodies, DNA forms double-stranded helix that stores the instructions for constructing and operating a living organism. It defines the fundamental differences between human and other creatures, marks our proneness to certain diseases, and guides the synthesis of proteins, which are the macromolecules carrying out all essential functions in our lives. So talking about something so important, how much do we know about it? You can say quite a bit. In 1950s, with the work of Wilkins, Watson, and Crick, we firstly saw the simple and elegant structure of DNA molecules and learned how they were passed on beautifully from parents to kids. And in early 2000s, with the progress of the Human Genome Project, we successfully mapped the complete sequence of human genome DNA, which is composed of more than 3 billion nucleotides. Most of the time, we thought we have cracked the secret of life. We'd be able to explain our appearance and behavior differences, identify causes of diseases, and develop drugs to cure them. However, every time, with time passing by, we'd learn that we were awfully wrong. If we see the DNA sequence of human as a book, the previous revolutionary scientific discoveries indeed have opened it and presented its content to us. But this is definitely not the end to the story. We have not understood the content yet. We knew very little about the language it is written in. To say we completely understand a language, we need to know its syntax, morphology, and semantics. We need to be able to read words, sentences, instead of just alphabets. Studies have shown that there's rich high-level information in DNA language, yet a lot of them is still far beyond our scope of knowledge. For example, thinking about our development process, we have over trillions of cells in our bodies, and they were all actually originated from one single cell, the fertilized egg. So almost all cells in our bodies share exactly the same DNA. However, they have divergent functions that enable us to think, talk, eat, and work. How is this achieved? The process of development is actually tightly regulated. Though every one of us has slightly different DNA sequence, there is a conserved gene regulation program that is making sure, in most cases, the fertilized egg can turn into a functional body after numerous cell divisions and differentiations. Of course, mistakes can happen. The dysregulated process may lead to all sorts of developmental defects and even tumor. But talking about gene regulation, what is it? Gene regulation is the process of turning genes on and off. It is a well-programmed and sensitive mechanism that ensures proper genes expressing proper amount of product at proper time. It is not only the basis for the development of multicellular organism, but allows 
all types of creatures to respond to environmental stimuli promptly. For example, our immune cells can be activated upon pathogen infection and start attacking the invaders very rapidly due to their specialized gene regulation programs. In other words, gene regulation programs tell our bodies how to read the DNA sequence correctly at that very moment to carry out correct functions. In-depth research on specific genes have shed light on the pattern of gene regulation during development and allowed us to fix a handful of problems caused by certain dysregulations. However, there are over 20,000 genes and at least 10 times more candidate gene regulators driven by different mechanisms on our genome DNA. Their interactions can be complicated on both temporal and spatial scales. They form dynamic regulatory networks, and it might be impossible for us to understand the general mechanism of gene regulation with traditional biological research approaches. If we'd like to see the whole picture of gene regulation, we need a fundamental breakthrough on the methodologies. How does experimental approaches can help us? One straightforward idea is to observe how gene regulation works directly with a microscope. The development of microscopy technology has allowed many progresses on fundamental biology in the past decades. However, the diameter of DNA helix is only two nanometers. And gene regulation is an environmental dependent dynamic process. We can hardly see how gene regulation happens directly inside the crowded cells filled with innumerable tiny molecules with current microscopy techniques. Another candidate is deep sequencing techniques. Will it bring us another miracle as it did for Human Genome Project? To some extent, yes. Various deep sequencing techniques generated a gigantic amount of data, and from which we took a glimpse of gene regulation patterns, or we can say the principles how cells interpret DNA languages, such as, oh, there must be a verb in a sentence. But there are also a lot of limitations. Aside from the technical limitations, one crucial question is, do we really know what we are looking for in the data? Can we understand what we saw from the data? We humans invented and evolved the language we used for daily communication. But the language of DNA and the gene regulation is a different story. What if the answer just lies in the data, but we cannot see it? Luckily, we now have a powerful helper, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence has been doing an excellent job on interpreting human verbal and visual languages. It should possess the ability to interpret DNA language as well. Well, many researchers also believe in the idea and have been making great progress towards this direction. For example, some of them have been focusing on the 3D structure of genome. Despite the nanoscopic diameter of DNA, the length of our genome is astonishing. It's two meters long. To fit into the tiny cell nucleus at the scale of micrometers, 
DNA is carefully folded and packed into a 3D structure. Biological experiments have indicated that the 3D structure of DNA is often stable and conservative. Also, it plays important roles in gene regulation. It is like a backbone, guiding the orchestra of dynamic and subtle regulation events in isolated compartments. Or we can say it actually defines the syntax of gene regulation. However, the pattern how a given DNA sequence folds remains unclear. So far, experimental methods still suffer a limitation of resolution. While the best methods can provide us a genome contact map at kilobase pair resolution, most regulation events happen at a scale around 10 bases. Thus, people have turned to deep learning models. Last year, Nature Methods published a study of 3D DNA structured prediction with convolutional neural network. The trained network did not only capture the known folding features, but also revealed many new patterns that were later validated by biological experiments, which brought us more insights about the DNA folding principles. This is a great achievement. However, compared to the syntax, semantics might be more important for us to understand a language. While DNA structure can imply gene regulation pattern, it will not tell us what exactly is happening. We still need to learn the semantics. From the perspective of semantics, many have focused on cis-regulatory elements prediction and cis-regulation modeling. Cis-regulatory elements are non-coding DNAs that regulate the expression of their neighboring genes. Cis-regulation is a vital mechanism of gene regulation, especially during early development. For example, it has been long known that a point mutation in a cis-regulatory element named ZRS leads to polydactyly, a kind of limb malformation in humans and other creatures. Also, not surprisingly, the activity of cis-regulatory elements vary by context. Thus, allowing different gene regulation in different cell types. With growing efforts, many more cis-regulatory elements have been identified by experiments in the past 20 years. However, confusions came along. Cis-regulatory elements with new features kept emerging, and the definition of these elements became broader and vaguer. Currently, people tend to identify candidate cis-regulatory elements with a combination of DNA sequence and their epigenetic features. I'm not going into the details of epigenetic features here, though they are actually important concepts. Briefly speaking, Epigenetic features are chemical modifications on DNA and DNA binding proteins. They can change the properties of DNAs without altering DNA sequences. They made the DNA more versatile, like declension in linguistics. By versatile, actually, I mean it. For example, in Latin, the pronominal adjective any can decline to more than 10 forms in different scenarios, which is already disturbing. However, epigenetic modifications on DNA 
can have more variations. Some of them indicate the activation of the gene. Others may indicate the repression. And some may mark the developmental related genes. But for many of them, we still haven't figured out their functions yet. Thus, understanding how different epigenetic features affect cis regulatory elements and the gene regulation has become an outstanding task. However, though many studies have attempted to interpret cis reg regulation with computational methods, most of them focused on classic machine learning methods, which were not able to learn and embed different levels of semantic information in the language of DNA. As the consequence, though many work achieved good performance on given data sets in given cell types, they showed limited ability of generalization. This is a huge drawback. If we'd like to learn gene regulation in development of early embryos, a big problem lying ahead is the lack of data due to both technical and ethical issues. To bypass the data problem, we need to review the general principles of gene regulation and know how to interpre interpret the language of data, of DNA. We expected the more sophisticated deep learning algorithms contributing to the situation. Adapting rapidly evolving algorithms in natural language processing, transfer learning, and etc., we are building a multi-level semantic aware model that aims to learn the general principles of cis regulation across cell types. Though details may not be disclosed at this moment, more are expected to be shared in the next few months. Cis regulation is only one of the many mechanisms cells adapt for gene regulation. Keeping the tiny machine running is a delicate process. The rules behind it have to be carefully designed and precisely executed. Revealing these principles won't only enlighten us how life works, but may also offer us opportunities to understand why it fails. So we can prevent or cure disease better and stay healthy. We hope our work can bring a more systematic perspective for computational genomics and inspire more research towards deciphering the underlying mechanism of gene regulation in cells. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>